Welcome to Light of the Southwest. It's good to be with you again. And, you know, we have so much fun with the guests that God raises up for our <laughs> Light of the Southwest. And today is no different. I have with me Doug Anderson. Doug. It's going to be great to see you, man. Good to see you. Been friends for a while now. We have been. But this we is the first been. time I've been on the show, and I love it. Thank well, you for the opportunity. Hey, thank you for coming out, and we're going to talk about the little concert. You're going to, yeah. you're going to have put on a concert, Absolutely. I think, over at New, New Day or New Dawn. Tomorrow night, actually. Fellowship, yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Looking so forward to it. We'll, we'll get there in just a minute. Okay. Um, so, again, so grateful uh, that you've joined us. You're going to enjoy this time with Doug this evening, uh, and you're going to get to hear uh, some of Doug's music. We're going to take a break, and you're going to get to hear uh, why I'm kind of sitting here with kind of a famous guy. Today, you know, <laughs> but he's famous, but he he loves the Lord, and you Absolutely. and I know that that's really what matters. But before we go any further and before we get into that, you know, these shows are absolutely not possible without partners. And we want uh, you individually to pray. If you're not already a, a partner with GLC, we would just ask that you ask God, you know, Lord, would you have me to help these guys bring this stuff forth and bring encouraging news to encourage and enhance people's lives. So if, if you would do that, we would be most grateful because the Word of God needs to be going out in this hour as never before. Would you agree with that, Doug? Absolutely. 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 So uh, anyway, Doug, catch us up a little bit. I, I guess it's been two years now almost because we missed last year. Well, I think uh, everybody missed last I think the everybody last missed years. last year. Right. Yeah. You know what, the, the ministry as far as Doug Anderson Music, which is myself, that, I know that's in the third person, but I've been going out, I've been doing this full time for almost 23 years now. Wow. Sing with a group called Ernie. Doug doesn't hardly look 23, <laughs> does he, huh? <laughs> Sing for about 14 years with a group called Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, which was all over the Gaither Homecoming series, if you watch those tapes. Okay. I was on there uh, on most of them, had a little bit more hair, probably, <laughs> looked a little younger. Hair? <laughs> right. And then I had some success as a soloist and um, have two small girls at that point who are now 20 and 18 years old. But they were they were pretty young um, back in, in that time. Yeah. So to be a father and to be the father that I needed to be and being a father is my biggest ministry. A man. So I Did want to be hear, home with them. Let, 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 let's just back up right there because <laughs> I want men to hear what Doug just said. Men, listen up. I, and I pray we've got a lot of young men out there listening that maybe have, are just be starting their families. But Doug just said one of the most critical, important things that you will hear as a father. Doug, repeat that. Well, we all, as men, we're driven to our careers, and we work hard to get there. But our biggest ministry is being a father to our kids. Come on. And we've always, we've always said that. So I stepped off the road um, with the group so I could focus on my, my own ministry and be home and be a dad to my daughters. Gotcha. Fast forward, you know, five years. It's been almost six years at this point. Of course, we missed last year with right. all this stuff going Silliness. on. And God... Um, has created an opportunity. My girls are grown now. Uh, created an opportunity for me to go back to Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. Wow. And, um, and travel a limited schedule, but to okay. be back out there with the guys and, and do what I truly, truly love to do. How and the amazing exciting. thing, and I don't know where the conversation goes. We pray that God would lead this conversation. Absolutely. But I learned two things during this big break. Mm-hmm. One, I learned how much Jesus loves me. Amen. And what then, else matters? Right. <laughs> and then the second thing was, you can't relinquish the calling God has on your life. That's exactly right. And we talked about that a little bit before. What are we going to do? How are we going to get through it? How right. are we going to keep our minds clear? And I questioned all of that through this, this big break. Yeah. But then you... you know that he has a greater plan than ours. Yes, which, he does. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. Well, you know, so basically you're, you're going to get back on the road because you've got a 20-year-old daughter, <laughs> senior in college, you said, right. I believe, 
in an in an eighteen year old right. that's graduating this year, senior in high school. So it, it kind of frees you up. You've kind of it does stayed around and fulfilled a lot of your responsibilities, and they're stepping into the next season of life. They are, yeah. And it's it's been fun to be home with with, with Michelle again. Michelle's my high school sweetheart. Uh, we've been married for twenty three yeah. years. Come but on, we've been together for thirty one. Wow. So we've been together longer than, than we've been apart. Yeah. And um, with this new season, it's kind of it's almost like we're dating again. So Isn't that fun? I think God you know puts what? the right situations in your I life used, at the yeah, right You time. will be blessed. He really, I, I, really I, I, does. But you know, I, Rinda and I are I, in a I, similar yeah, place, as I was sharing yeah. with you. I, we just married our last daughter of five all. Oh, so right. five daughters are, are now married, <laughs> and uh, uh, and my son, our lone sons, are married one. So Rinda and I, you know, on the one hand, you could say we don't know what to do with ourselves, right. but we are having an incredible time. I bet. Uh, you heard right. Georgia talking about the lake and where Rinda is today and all right. this, but I'm telling you, we we really are enjoying sure. life, but a lot of that is we're enjoying each other. Absolutely. Uh, and you need that time. You you need that time, and, it, and we're at 43 years, well, 44 years. That's awesome. Yeah, in 44 years, raising six children, um, the 20th grandchild is on the way. Wow. And, and so, wow, you know, we, we talk about it, and you, you were high school, or how far back? I was a sophomore, and she was a junior. So she is literally six months older than me. I never let her forget that, by the way. <laughs> She's six months older. She's six months older. Well, gosh, I can't tell it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell this real quick. I am six years older than Renda. Really? But she has had the audacity to tell people that for every year she's been married to me, she ages five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why she'd say something like that. Yeah. But, but so Michelle, is, is she down with this plan for you to get back oh. on the road? Well, this is a funny thing. We're, she's going to go with you. <laughs> well, she will get to go with me a lot more. Yeah. Uh, because I'll still do 40 to 50 of my own solo dates along with the group stuff. So she's... She'll be able to travel with me uh, a little bit more. But after being home together for, you know, a year and a half almost, yeah, right. she is thrilled that I'm in Texas today. <laughs> she, Sometimes okay. I get in her way. Yeah. <laughs> if we're she talking, gets a vacation. Yeah, she does. Get out of my way and let <laughs> yeah. me do what I need to do. Yeah. And then come home and we'll be yeah, So we'll you be may be again. aging her a few more years a <laughs> right. year as well. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Oh, but she is a, um, she is a rock solid person in our family. And I think a lot of times you'll see where the mothers, the fathers are out doing things and the women's are, women are having great careers at this point sure. too. But still, she is the, the rock solid the hub. centerpiece in our, <laughs> yeah. in our house. Yeah. And as, I couldn't do it without her. Well, as we say, if, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. We, yes, you know, we like when mama's happy. I love when she's happy. Yeah. And I love I, to make her happy. And then, I do too. Yeah. It's funny with the, with the girls. Um, I mean, I like to, I like to spoil Michelle. I like to, you know, I like to hug yeah. her and, and grab yeah. her hand and, well, you could say yes. flirt with her. I just love yes. the love on her. Yes. And I get the same reaction from those kids every time. Oh. It's like, oh, do you have to do that in public? But I learned from, I learned from the best. My, my father adored my mother. Did and that you? was, to me, that was godly. Oh, wow. I love that he treated her that way. I love yes. that he... He wanted her to have oh, things and, and take care of her and squeeze her and grab her hand and wow. you know get her food and things like that. So and what a role model you absolutely. Have. And and you you told me that that has been one of the difficulties of this it past has. year. Uh, do you mind? No, sharing a um, because my, a, a lot of people have lost loved ones over the last mm. twelve months. I mean, it seemed like an inordinate. Sure. number of individuals' lives. But but pick us up right there, Doug. Doug well, about, uh, about a year ago, we lost my mom to a, a disease called Alzheimer's disease, which a, a lot of people out there have, have walked through the, that disease with, with their family members. And it is absolutely horrible. It's not fair at all. And um, through that whole thing, my dad has remained solid in his faith and mm. his praise for Christ and his his love for Jesus, and I think that's the thing that's got him through because Amen. we're all going through something, coming out of something or getting ready to go into something. It's just Amen. called life. 
Yeah. But he has he's inspired me so much That's with his, his said continuous he keeps faith. scripture on top of his tongue. Right? He's that guy that puts post-it notes all over the house. Yeah. And the post-it notes will have a scripture on it. Wow. He had an accident um, a few months ago, and, and he had to live with us for a little bit. And we'd wake up in the morning, and there would be post-it notes or little tablets of paper where he'd write scripture out, just so it was constantly in our mind and in his. Wow. So what I a don't. Testimony. It is a huge testimony. Yeah. And my m mom and dad, they always danced. Did you they? know, to the old, like, um, Frank Sinatra and mm. Dean Martin stuff. And mm. probably as a kid, I didn't appreciate that like my <laughs> girls don't appreciate us. <laughs> you and but I would give so much to be able to see yeah. that again. Yeah. And it kind of sent us into um, one of the hardest Seasons. parts of our life. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, through that, we probably made some wrong decisions or just, you know, weren't totally right in the head with everything that was going on. Yeah. But it's you amazing know. how God puts um, things in your life to happen. I was flying home from um, North Carolina, yeah. and I would sang at a funeral. Mm -hmm. And um, I was trying to get home fast right. because um, I was going to be gone another week, so I was trying to get home to see my kids. Sure. Go into the airport, and I asked the lady. Her name was Carrie. I said, Carrie, is there any way I can get on that earlier flight? And she said, no, sir, they're, they're all full. And I said, that's fine. And she goes, why are you trying to get home early? And I said, well, I'm trying to get home to see my kids. Yeah. And I said, I've been, <laughs> sing I've, been, I've been singing, you know, at a funeral. And she goes, what kind of singer are you? I said, I'm a gospel music singer. She takes my ticket and rips it up and gives me another ticket. And she says, when you speak to him, <laughs> mention my name. <laughs> and I said, I sure will. Went back to my seat, and I, I sat down there, and I just thank God for Carrie and what's going on yes. with her. Got up, and getting on the plane, walk up to her. She's taking the tickets, and I said, hey, Carrie, I mentioned your name to him. And she said, you did? And I said, he already knew your name by heart. Oh, amen. And through that, we were going through mm. junk ourselves. Sure. She starts crying. Weeping. She reaches down, grabs another ticket, rips mine up, and hands it to me. And I said, I don't know what you're going through. And at this point, I don't have the answers. But I do know somebody who does. It does. Got on the plane. <laughs> got on the plane. Man. Handed the stewardess my ticket. Mm. And I started to walk back in the back of the plane. And, and she um, yells my name. She said, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. I said, yes. She was, no, your seat's right here up front. She said, you're, <laughs> you're in first class. And in my mind, I thought, God, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm listening. But this is good. I'm, I'm on it. We got home, I was wow. able to spend the, the uh, day with my kids, get on a cruise ship, I was gonna be gone singing for seven days with a pastor, uh, Dr. David Jeremiah. Yes. So I was on a boat and I was singing. Went the whole week, got off in Victoria, Canada, gonna go through customs. Okay. Well, when you sing on the boat, you get off first and everybody else, all the passengers follow you. So I get to the customs agent and I set my passport down and I said, um, here you go. And he said, what are you doing? I said. Well, I've been singing on that big boat for yeah. the last seven days. And he said, you're a singer. And I said, <laughs> yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. And he said, sing. <laughs> and the only thing that I could come up with was the chorus to, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful <laughs> name it is. The name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, my King. Oh, man. What he didn't know was I was walking through that gate. There were 2,000 people believers behind me <laughs> when i started singing That's, they all started singing whoa, are you kidding me <laughs> and then oh, he this is one of those christmas things oh, at the mall thing but bigger <laughs> and i was struggling at that point with going through everything that we'd been going through yes he takes my passport sets it down on the desk and he takes that big stamp and he Boom. stamps it and he says you're free to go and all of a sudden Everything that I'd been going through just broke. We carry around so much stuff. We carry around guilt. We carry around shame. We carry around failures and struggles, yes. Yes. addictions, health yes. problems. We carry all that, and we just walk around the world Waited carrying down. all that. Hunchback. But when Jesus stamps your ticket, yes. you're free to go. You're stamped. You're sealed. So in those little times through all this, he has always been there because you don't know how strong you are until strong is all you have. 
And when he was all I had left, I found out he was all I needed the whole time. <laughs> Stronger. He is. Ever. He has been so good to us. You know, I, I always think when you say that about the stamping, I always think about the book of Nehemiah. And when Nehemiah was convicted to go back and restore the walls, sure. he, you know, the, the king picked up on it. He had prayed because... Right. He had prayed, and the next thing, the king acknowledged his countenance and said, right. Nehemiah, what's wrong? I, I don't see. <laughs> and he's a cupbearer, you know, right. so he's going, Nehemiah, what's wrong? <laughs> and so he said, what is it that you want? And he said, well, I want to go back and restore yeah. the walls. And, and the king said, what do you need? And he gave him the provision and. He said, one more thing here. Let me give my seal. Ooh. But you know what? That seal is what gave him that clear passageway back to Jerusalem. Right. Well, that seal of Christ upon us that you're talking about, Doug, is our free passage uh, home. Absolutely. And so whatever we're going through right now, and, and I appreciate the way you said that, we don't have to carry no, these you don't. burdens. He doesn't want right. us carrying these burdens. In fact, he's told us to bring them to him. Yes. Hadn't he? And lay them at his Come feet. Come unto me. My yoke is easy. My <laughs> burden is light. Come on. And when you start to fill your mind with that, everything else just works out. Well, see, your dad yeah. posting those scriptures, speaking those scriptures, Y'all, that's what I want you to know. If you, will, if you will meditate upon the Word of God, you will find the strength and courage you need to face everything right. and break. See sure. those chains broken that are shackling you. Yeah. Whether it's fear or addiction or sure. what. I promise you, Doug, in our 25 years at Mission Messiah, the, the most powerful thing I believe God had us yeah. do was ask those women to memorize Scripture. Because sure. when you memorize and meditate on the Word yeah. of God, you renew your mind yeah. and you strengthen your Absolutely. inner man. And your, and your purpose becomes present. Yes. Because, I mean, I've seen people that are at the end of their rope going through things. Every, I mean, we all have friends and family that are going through struggles at sure. this point. I've got two friends right now that are going through a, a big battle of cancer. I mean, and they're my age. Yeah. But I just keep telling them, and they know this as well, but if you still have breath, you still have purpose. And, purpose. and just keep claiming it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And it's amazing what falls off your back, the worries fall off your back, and you're just focused on your purpose. We had a, um, when, when COVID first started, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody stopped going to church and they were closing churches down, I had a I had a date, and, um, and it, was, it was a great-sized church, and the pastor called the week before, and he says, I, um, he said, I really don't know who's going to be here. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, we've already sold tickets. They'll be there. They'll, they'll, they'll show up because <laughs> I'm that they great, I guess. Money. I don't know. They but pay I'm, good money, and they're coming. I'm yeah. coming. They're, they're going to be there. Eleven people showed up. Oh, in the big church. In the big church. It looked... <laughs> It was empty, and I got up there. How that are you morning. feeling about well, that? Well, I wasn't. I wasn't very happy, but I thought, um, you know what? I do what I do. I'm going to sing, hundred and ten percent. Give everything I can. Everything. One guy sitting on the second row. You could tell he lived life, and um, God was working on him that morning, and I so much so that I walked down off the stage and I put my hand on his shoulder. Wow. And he's weeping, and after the song was over, I. I grabbed his shoulder and I looked at him. I said, I don't know what you're going through. I don't have the answers, but I do know the person who does. Amen. After the show, the pastor brings this guy up to me. He says, hey, Doug, this is Mark. And Mark gave his life to Christ this morning. Wow. And I was thrilled for Mark. Wow. But I was a little angry with myself mm. because I went in there with the wrong attitude. The only thing that mattered was Mark. At was that Mark. <laughs> and Mark looked at me and he said, well, I guess you're the reason I'm here. And I said, no, Mark, 
You're the reason that I'm, I'm here. here. <laughs> You're the yeah. reason that I'm here. Isn't that amazing? And he's always orchestrating everything oh. out and that we have no clue what's going on. And suddenly you're looking at him going, oh, no. all right, okay, I God, know. that was it. I know. He, he is attentive to every minute detail of every situation. Yeah. He is amazing. You know, Doug, speaking about song and singing, I love, uh, and you said it kind of tied your testimony. Oh. But I think we've got a song they're going to yeah. cue up. It's called I'll Take What's Left, a song written what's... just for me. Amen. Can we play that Absolutely. right now? Thank you. Hallelujah. He asked if I would give my all, and I trembled and replied, There's not much here that you would want, just fragments of a life. And I've wasted so much through the years with choices that just brought me tears. Everything I'd ever gained was lost. So there I stood with empty hands at Calvary's cross. And he said, I'll take what's left, <laughs> what's broken. pieces that you have lost and I'll take what's left no matter where they scattered I'll take you just the way you are there's no need to spend another day Wow, that's that's fun. Isn't that a great song? That is a super song. Not very many. When did people, you record that? Or it was about 2012. Um, it was my first actual solo project. Really? And the writers, who are great friends of mine, um, Joel Lindsay, Wayne Hahn, came to my house. I wanted them to come to my house to write songs for the project. Yeah. And I really wanted to tell my story, so okay. I basically told them how he's redeemed me, how he loves me, how he's picked up all the pieces in my life and put them all back together. And um, they 
basically wrote that song just for wow. me. And the wow. cool thing about that is, I, it wasn't just for me. No. It was for everybody else, <laughs> no. too. No, absolutely. For hopefully everybody that just heard it <laughs> right now. I hope you were blessed. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to do what I do. And probably going through all the stuff that we've been through with, you know, Right. We keep on saying it. I'm tired of talking about it. but I uh, call it the great pandemic. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is a plan. Yeah, there we is just a haven't plan. seen it yet. That, that's exactly uh, right. And, and the enemy of our soul thinks that he's working the plan. Right. But uh, the master is no. sitting in the heavens laughing yeah. at their works. Because I got this. He's, he's got saying, it. I got this. He's got it. And, and that is the other reason why... We want to encourage everyone, all of our viewers today, to listen to what you said sure. about being at the end and finding that strength. Yeah. Because it's there for all of yeah. us, whosoever will. Absolutely. Amen? And you're never too far that he can't pick you right His back. His arm up. is not too yeah. short. I, I totally, and I probably don't, probably took that for granted at times in my life yeah, but well, I know we did this yeah. I mean pieces scattered all over the place we think there's no way that he can love me because I'm this far I'm I've He's done pick, this and I've done that, that and, yeah and and put you back together a lot stronger than you were before you ever were and he's he's done that with me and I'm yeah so thankful yeah. we talked about the um, taking a day at a time you, you touched on a subject earlier that I loved and how we've been so scattered through all this whole well, thing. Well, we have, and, and, and yeah, let me pick up right there because, and I, I told some people this recently, you know, in that 18-month span in there, you just could not help but have that sense of everything being shaken. Sure. You know, and the Word tells us that in the last days, everything that can be shaken will sure. be shaken. And, and I think the shaking's probably only just begun. But what I can tell you I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, Doug, is if you are not anchored in yeah. the King of Kings and Come Lord on. of Lords, you are going to be shaken to utter destruction and lost eternally. Sure. So we're here to encourage you, <laughs> get yourself anchored. anchored. Amen? Build your house on the rock. On the rock, baby. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. When I can tell when I'm not in the Bible like I should, or meditating oh. like I should, or because my thoughts are everywhere, and then I start trying to fix things myself. Mm. I recorded a song a few years ago called "Let God Drive," and literally, <laughs> here in the last few months, we have just relaxed, got more rest, which I hope you talk about that. Okay, and. Um, just let him do what he does. Absolutely. When the doors are closed, the doors are closed. When the doors open, you walk the doors through. Open. And be available well, and ready. And, and that's it. And and when we when we fix upon him, and you know, the, the word is clear. Fix our eyes upon Jesus. Right. The author and finisher of our <laughs> faith. And that's really all we need to do, sure. even in the midst of a great pandemic right. is fix our eyes on Jesus and he will literally right. author as you and I are both sharing right. he will literally author and develop that faith yeah. by which we can stand justified before him Sure, you know it's all a trial it's all to be counted as joy and it's when you start getting into that and you start anchoring deeper and deeper and deeper have you ever like been on a? Um, our family's very ath athletic, and we've done athletic, you know, sports and stuff and workouts our whole life. When you start seeing results, yeah, you want more of it. Yes. When you start feeling better, you want to feel even better than that. Right. When you start anchoring yourself into what God really, Come truly on. has Come for on, you, Doug. you want more and more and more. And then when you want more, you want to tell everybody how you That's got right. it. That's exactly Which your right. ministry becomes that much more effective. And we're not talking about a televangelist ministry no. or a singer's ministry. No. I'm talking about the ministry that you can have right in your home. Absolutely. And right in your life and your little To circle. your children. Sure. Like you just said. Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, and, and honestly, I, I love what you said you had done, what the Lord led you to do with your family and 
how you pulled off the road at that time and spent it because, you know, I've not done, I can promise you, to this date and time in my life, I've not done anything any more fulfilling yeah. than focusing my life into my children, yeah. into my family. But the rewards of that uh, have just been unbelievable. Yeah. So you know it has to be God. Right. You know, that that, that was God's plan. And my goodness gracious, has... Has all of this nonsense not been an attack on the family? Sure it has. Even. I mean, families being separated at hospitals, can't even be with yeah, loved ones. I mean, just absurd yeah. things. The old enemy's effort, one more time, yeah. to, break, to break family, God's yeah. first institution. And on the other side of it, with us having to be home all the time, on the very opposite end of that, we had to spend time together. Kind of backfired on and the old devil, didn't it? It really did because <laughs> we did get closer. Yeah. I mean, because we had to spend that time together. And, of course, you know, with social media and stuff and phones and computers, yeah. we're all on them. I mean, I'm on them just like everybody right. else. But we would literally sit in our house, and we'd be going through things, and then we would say, hey, look at this. So, yeah. and, But we would all, get just together. as long as we were all together, I didn't care. Right. Yeah. And uh, God strengthened us through that. And we needed to be strengthened as a like family. Like that. Right. In Just that like world. that. Spending yeah. time together. Yeah. So he's you know, always got a, he's always got a plan. And I, and I, you know, beg people and tell them, just grab a hold of it. Just amen. be, and be confident in it. Amen. Because he will work it out. He will. So Doug, on this light, um, what, is the Lord telling you, or are you getting any strong sense as to the direction of all of this at this point in time? What what has driven it, maybe? What what um, the end game sure. is? And I think we touched on this before in a, in, in a conversation. When I started this career of music or calling, mm -hmm. it was literally about who can I sing in front of? How many people can I sing in front of? How many awards can I win? Yeah. What lights are out there? What's the sound? What microphones you're, who can I impress? What can I, right. it was all about that. Right. And literally it got to the point where that's kind of what brought everything back down and it almost literally got taken away from me because wow. my goal was just to, Misdirected. how big can we get? And yeah. it was a pure goal. Well, and you won a lot of big awards. Sure. I mean, you won well, several I double mean, awards and I'm thankful things. for those. Yeah, and sure. they opened a lot of doors for me. Right. God used it. it sh he sure did. And um, thankful when I stepped out by myself to do my own thing and support my family by myself. I had the platform yeah. and the exposure to be able to do that. Yeah. Hmm. Now, it's just about... Mark. Mm. Now it's just about, I don't care who's there. I don't care how many people's there. Exactly. I just want Mark's to proclaim his message because there's a Mark out there somewhere that needs to hear how much Jesus loves him. Amen. And I mean, it's literally wow. transformed my outlook. Yeah. My purpose is to tell the world about Jesus. And I'm a mess up. I mean, are we all? If we could go back through it, I, I've made so many mistakes. There's times I haven't been a good father. Right. There's times I've said things to them that I regret. There's yeah. times I've said things to my wife that I regret. Sure. And made decisions that weren't the best for us. Right. But he's good. All the time. He is so good. And um, I am literally a story of, of being goodness. brought <laughs> to where I can literally praise him and proclaim him Amen. and tell the world, it's going to be okay. And I don't have all the answers. No. But like we said earlier, I do know somebody who does. Yeah. And hopefully something we say or do today or in the months uh, coming up or in the concert tomorrow night, you yeah. will hear of the love of Jesus coming Absolutely. out of my Absolutely. And you know, the, uh, the reality is in him, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> Outside of him, Ain't nothing going to be all right. Right. You're so... That's, that's so back true. to that shaken to destruction again. And that's why we just want to encourage everyone. You know, I'm, I'm always amazed when I, when I see that, that resistance to the Lord and to invitations and so forth. But I promise you, 
if, if you'll just open your heart, what we have is a loving father. Yeah. A father that ran to meet that prodigal son. Yeah. And he is not a respecter of persons, Doug. <laughs> he didn't run to that prodigal son and not be willing to run to you and me because he sure ran to me. Right. And I grew up thinking God was a loving God. So many of my friends or people you come yeah. in contact with, Boom. it yeah. was just fire and brimstone. Yeah. And if, if you did this, you were, you, know, you were going to eternal damnation and all that. I grew up just thinking he loves me. Yeah. It wasn't until life starts happening and you get shaken, and which we all do, yeah. sure. that I started you know, putting my hands up or building walls or yeah. against him or just away. And then I found out he was all I needed the whole time. All I got to do is get right back in his lap. Right. And, and that's not that he's not a disciplining sure. father because he's a perfect father. <laughs> he loves and he is truth. And so you got to get both sides. This is not some right. sleazy, greasy grace. Ugh. Uh, that's that's not what we're talking about, and there's a lot of that that's been preached in these last yeah. days, because he said it would be. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about here. No. He is a God that that loves us enough to expect. Yeah. The most. Yeah. And he is willing to provide it. Yeah. He loves you, and he's got a purpose and a plan for you. Yeah. And yeah. when I wake up and say that every morning. Yeah. He loves me, and he's got a purpose and a plan for me today. Yeah. And what he's called me to do, he will make it, he will make me able to do it. He will yeah. give me everything I need to fulfill that calling, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. So, Doug, what, kind of jumping back but, but moving forward here. So, in all of this, what do you see for our country today? Well, we need revival, for one. Okay. I mean, and we're all focused on, you know, what's happening in, in our government and, um, you know, overseas. And, and, but I just think we need a Christ-centered society, and <laughs> everything would take care of itself. Ta-da! Right. I mean, I know that's, that's preaching to the choir, but, you know, there's two sides to our government, and, you know, whatever side you're on makes no difference to me. Right. But God loves us both. Yes. I mean, yes. we've just gotten our opinions are this way and that way. And, uh, you know, back when um, Desert Storm was going on or the, the mm -hmm. Twin Towers and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they went in and Al-Qaeda and all that stuff. And it just floors me when you sit back and think God loves them just as much as sure. he loves us. And we all think we're doing right. And we all think that we've, right. you know, we've got it, a hold cause. of it. But... God loves us all, and yeah. uh, I would love to see revival here. But the big thing is revival starts right in our home. Absolutely. Right here. And when that starts With to spill over and it grows us. and it grows and it grows, that's how you get to. And fighting and bickering, I mean, that's human nature, I guess. But I'm, I've even backed off from that stuff. We don't share opinions of what we think because, I don't know, I just love Jesus. And, yeah. um, and I hope that. We can shine through this station mm -hmm. and uh, concerts and through your ministry, mm -hmm. be a light in our own little part of the world that just grows and grows and grows and grows. And that's how, I think that's how you change mm -hmm. the world. Amen. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, I, I think you said it well, it's got to start with me. Yeah. It's got to start with each one of us right. making that commitment and, uh, you know, you're going to have to go back to what we said earlier. We're going to have to meditate in God's Word. Yeah. That is where truth is found. Sure. And we are living in an hour where there's not a whole lot of truth being told right. or spoken. In fact, there's a whole, whole lot of lying going on. The father of <laughs> lies is having a heyday. Oh, loving it. Through multiple venues, through multiple industries, right. through, um, I mean, I. You know he is he's having a heyday sure. it appears, and my concern is we as believers have dropped some balls sure along the way right and so that's 
that's what's got, that's the revival. That's right. the repentance. Sure. And, and that's what, you know, I'm, I think that, that many individuals really need to understand that we have a role as Christians to be salt and light in our yeah. society. And I Agreed. think much too long we have sat on our hands mm -hmm. and not had the boldness of Christ right. on us to speak to things. Preaching to the choir. And you mentioned earlier, we have to start by being grounded ourselves, building our house upon the what rock. What do we have to offer if we don't have it ourselves? I get it. But we have to protect ourselves too. You do. And something we talked about off camera before it started, you said you did have brought things down to four different things. Right. And one of the biggest things that, that we agree on mm -hmm. that we've both done is we've got to get some rest. There, we've we got did. too much stuff going in our minds all the time. Social media, TV, Fox, CNN, everything that's going on, family lives, that's illnesses. Good. We have to rest. Tell, tell them what you told me earlier. Well, uh, yeah, what you're talking about is, is mass confusion, right. mass distraction. But... but simplifying life, and I've, I've said this to him some oh, before, yeah. but it won't hurt to repeat. Right. But w after my vacillating and flip-flopping and wondering what to do in the midst of the mess, you know, I finally settled on, on these things that, that the Lord has laid down for us. Live one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Doug, Jesus was clear. There's enough evil people today, <laughs> today, to contend with without worrying about yesterday or tomorrow. Right. Amen? Right. Well, if you're going to be able to deal with the evil of the day, you have to be meditating on the Word of God because right. therein you will find your strength, you'll find your courage, your mind will be renewed, right. you'll be a clear thinker. That in itself is obliterating distractions sure. because you're getting pure truth, yeah. pure word of God. Right. That's truth. Well, when you when you're spending that time meditating in the word of God, mm -hmm. and you see all of God's faithfulness, faithful to the promises that He has spoken through the ages and His fulfillment, then you go, Wow, He is faithful. I can rest right. in his promises. Sure. Now see, that's the thing because when you look, when you look at the day of provocation, <laughs> God said those people would never enter his rest, Doug, mm. because they refused to combine their faith and belief with the promises he had made. Come on. So we rest when we when we connect the promises with faith. Sure. And that's again going to be gained by the Word. Faith comes by hearing, Absolutely. hearing by the Word right. of God. God. That's right. So there you are. So when all this starts to jail, what can we do but praise Him? You know? <laughs> that's that's where favorite, you start that, that's singing, my favorite brother. Part. That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. So that's it, isn't it? I mean, I, and I find rest in praising Him, oh. I find strength in praising Him. Yes. There's a little thing that, that I do now that um, it doesn't matter, I mean, where I am. If some, I feel God's blessing me. And right. um, I'll kneel down right where I am. I'll sit down and just take just a second. Sometimes that's five seconds. Sometimes that's five minutes. Just to thank Him for what He's done Amen. in my life. And when I'm done with that, it's just like I, my whole day is renewed again. Yes. And just renewed again. And yep. you're constantly, Paul said, pray without ceasing. Come on. It's totally in your mind and Come your thought on. process. And when you start training your mind like that, that way with the meditation and with the rest and with the praise, yes. I mean, you're not carrying all that junk anymore because you, you don't, don't need it. And you because don't guess what? It. You're in his courts. That's, that's exactly How right. How do we enter? Uh, Thanksgiving. That's right. With praise. I wonder oh, if that's man. my silly phone. I'll tell you what. Oh, Dr. Robbins. <laughs> and all that social media is on Twitter <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but that's what happens. So, Truly, if you want to be invigorated, meditate on the Word of God, begin to memorize Scripture, find you a Scripture that, 
that is appropriate and applicable to something going on right. in your life and and get it ingrained right. within you and you'll be amazed sure. at the strength it'll give you. Is, and is you that not true? Automatically praise without even thinking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And if you don't know the scriptures, if you weren't taught that, find somebody and ask them. Yeah. Ask them. Ask them what deals with fear, with anxiety, with praise. Ask somebody. We'd be glad to share some of that with absolutely. you. And absolutely. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves. We do. <laughs> we absolutely do. Right. And, uh, but, but guess what? We start asking those kind of questions. I promise you, God's got people in our lives right. with the answers. Yep. If they're not there, he'll bring them. Ah. And so uh, that's, uh, uh, we hope you're encouraged in these things because what we're telling you is that in spite of all this uh, mess, we have not succumbed to fear. Right. Because God's not given us a spirit, spirit of fear. Power and sound mind. Amen. But of, of power and strength and a sound mind. And so the reality is if you are living in fear right now, we're, we're giving you the medicine <laughs> to overcome fear. Sure. And it's the spirit of the living God. It really is. And the word of God is the sword of right. the spirit. So you can begin to utilize it and go to work cutting away those things that are hindering and blocking and manifesting fear in your life. Right. Which will then get you to the calling that he truly has for you. There you go. And he will equip you with that. You cut away the dross, right. don't you? you? And you know, with, with the calling that we have, we're able to come to you and do this television show. We're able to do a concert. And we're, I mean, exactly. he's just literally given us, given me the desires of my heart. And I couldn't be more grateful Amen. to be here. And, and see, that's, you know, through the years, Doug, I've talked with so many young ladies that have come to the mission, sure. for example, and just in a state of utter hopelessness, no concept of who they were made to be. But Doug, when they begin to look into God's Word, sure. They begin to hear the Spirit speak to them. Right. They are moved from utter hopelessness to abundant life. Right. And isn't that what Jesus said He came to give us? Absolutely. So I love why that. would anybody not choose abundant life? The yeah. problem is, Doug, and I was guilty of it in my life, and it was looking for love in all the wrong places. Sure. And you're not the only one. Well. Most of us run that gamut, don't we? <laughs> right. Yeah. It uh, takes a breaking off. Yeah. And, and that's what I pray and would believe right now, Doug, is I talk about where things are headed. Yeah. Doug, I'm going to be perfectly honest today with you. I just believe it's only just begun. There are darker days yeah. on the horizon. Revival, I don't see quite ready to break out. I agree. There is still so much flesh on all of us right. that has got to be burned away. And you just don't burn dross to the surface, right. heat it to the surface without fire. Without fire. And Doug, I'm afraid the Lord has deemed we've continued to look for a man yeah. to get us out. I mean, as a nation, sure. we've continued to believe that some man either this man or that man, could do right. the hula. Right. You and I both know there's only one. Yeah. And now more than ever, we need to take care of our homes. We need to we take do. care of our homes. We need to take care of our little corner of the world. We need to take, wrap our families close mm -hmm. and just be anchored, like you said, in his word and his thoughts and keep that first and foremost. So we're taking care of ourselves. So. When we step out as a, as a unit, we're ready and prepared for whatever comes our way. Exactly. So I am wholeheartedly, so we're so focused on the family at this point, That's taking so care of those girls and making Nurturing. sure they're equipped. Well, and, and you have a daughter, your oldest is at Purdue. Yeah. 
that's that's an accomplishment in herself. I hear yes, I'm pretty proud uh, of your your drive and athleticism and those type of things working in an arena like that. Yeah. But what has she faced there with the world's perspectives? Um, you know, I mean, when you when you live on campus at, at Purdue University, which is a great place, I, I went there myself. I mean, um, the universities have to make decisions to keep everybody masked. And I know everybody has different opinions right. of that and you know, yeah. they have to get vaccinated and everybody's got different opinions on that. She's basically taking care of herself. She's basically, you know, she has friends of course and things, but she's taking care of herself, making sure she's ready to face the day, whether that's through prayer and meditation or right. just, you know, taking care of yourself physically. I mean, and we've always, we've been a very wellness family and you know, we do do the physical stuff, but at the same time, we do the mind stuff as well, where we take care of our minds, we strengthen our minds, and, you know, it's, it's just a weird world out there. So uh, we've always preached to our kids, you got to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody, nobody else will. So mm -hmm. I hate to say they're kind of in a bubble, but universities are like that now. But she's, yeah. she's doing fine. She's flourishing. So the university actually mandated the, all of those things? Even they, down to the vaccination? They did not, they did not mandate, mandate. Vac oh, vaccination. Okay. But if you didn't have the vaccination, you had to wear a mask. Okay. So, I mean, that's... And they're trying to take care of their... They don't want it all to break out and everybody to be gone, which right. I understand that. And I know I'm not going to get into all that because right. everybody's got different opinions, and sure. that's fine. But right. I just... We have basically taught her to take care of herself, and she's doing a great job of it, I think. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. So. And uh, your younger daughter, any She's plans? She's a senior in high school. But so it's kind of, it's, we live in a small town. Does she so. have plans for the future? Yeah, or? she's going to go, she'll either go to um, Purdue with her sister or she'll probably go to maybe Ball State. So they're, they're doing really well. I'm so proud of them. Awesome. But we started that as a young age, and I think me being home uh, during that time where they were yeah. growing up and I was yeah. able to be present and, along with their wonderful mother, um, we've prepared them. I think they're ready. Yeah. And if they're not, I'll be right there to pick it there up. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, I, uh, again, Doug and I just want to encourage uh, men today. We're going we're to pick on you men. We're, we both got blessed with some amazing women. Sure. The Lord bless us. But guess what? Uh, if you're not married yet, it's as simple as asking God to bring that woman, the right, right woman for you, and your makeup into your life. Sure. I mean, that's what he did for me. Uh, you know, I never will forget, Doug. I was a, had graduated from college and been out on the road for a while and come back and uh, had opened some businesses. And uh, But I'd, I'd made a list. And uh, we're going to have to talk about that another time because our time is running out <laughs> right here. But, uh, Doug, it has been such a blessing. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, to have you. And we'll look forward to that concert yep. tomorrow night. Uh, New Dawn Fellowship. New Dawn Fellowship. Right. Come out, and check uh, me out. We're going to have a great time. Uh, and and Wally's a great guy. He really he? is. Love Wally over there at yeah. uh, New Dawn, and uh, they are they are fine people over there. Yeah. Thanks for so, having me. Thank you for being here. Blessings to you. And uh, the the Lord be with you and, and your daughters you. and your precious Michelle. Thank you. And uh, all I know, brother, is keep singing, keep singing. <laughs> Won't you partner with us? We need, we need this good word out. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you.